Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Our patient is 23-year-old Ralph Fletcher, a candidate for orthognathic surgery. Ralph, open and close your jaws, please. Open widely. Now close till your teeth are all the way together. That's fine. Now relax your lips a little bit and just let your jaw hang. Now close tight as you can. Now we'll look at this from the front. In front view, we will see uh, Mr. Fletcher has proportionately a relatively long lower third of the face. Would you now open widely, Ralph? Just open your mouth as wide as you can and close your teeth again together. Open again and close. Now with the help of cheek retractors, we'll come in for more detail of what occlusal contacts there may be here. And now, Ralph, if you will try to open again and close. Here we will see the obvious extreme open bite, the minimal contact posteriorly. Try to open again and close again. Now stick your tongue way out and back. Fine, now we will ask Ralph to read a few sentences. We bought my father two new lamps. We should have chose a red coat hanger. Bobby pulled down the two go-karts. These things are very full. Send, send his shoe measure to Charlie Jones. Now we will come in at a different angle and ask uh, if Ralph might once again uh, just run through those uh, silly sentences. We bought my father two new, whoops. We bought my father two new sh lamps, sun lamps. Try that again. Just go ahead. We bought my father two new sun lamps. We should choose a red coat hanger. Bobby pulled down two go-karts. The things are very full. Send his shoe measure to Charlie Jones. Let's try the last two again. The things are very full. Send his shoe measure to Charlie Jones. We're going to have the opportunity to follow the progress of Mr. Ralph Fletcher uh, through his course of treatment. It was five weeks ago that uh, Ralph had his surgery, and uh, we'll just find out how he's getting along. Are you uh, back at work now, Ralph? Yes, I am. What sort of work do you do? Oh, uh, carry out, boy. What Stop. about having these teeth together? Is that bothering you very much? No. Okay. We'll uh, have a look at uh, Ralph in some detail, but just to remind you uh, of the preoperative conditions, let's look at the radiographs, the lateral cephalogram uh, shown here. Uh, gives us the type of open bite deformity uh, which he has. You can see that this tracing has been made on the preoperative uh, radiograph and uh, to get a little better detail on that we can see here the extent to which the bite was open anteriorly. The operation that was carried out for him will review uh, in a moment with the help of some study casts, but you can see the lack of function that he had in contacting only the second molars back here with absolutely no anterior contact at all. Note also the height of this anterior mandible. That is the dimension from the incisors to the chin point and the general warpage of the basal bone downward. These were given consideration in the planning for the surgery, which in this instance involved both jaws. Let's look then at the models that were made for this case. And on your 
left, you see the preoperative casts, the relationship of these uh, teeth at that time. And uh, with these lines as a reference point, we can see roughly where uh, the contact of the posterior teeth was made and the extent of the anterior open bite. Now in the planning, it was uh, indicated to try to distribute the correction in both jaws. That is to close this gap anteriorly by a correction that was solely in one jaw uh, was too much to, to ask, as you might well imagine. If it was all done in the mandible, it would give him an occlusal plane that was sort of like a ski jump takeoff in front and would not be functional, and he would expose uh, only his lower teeth and gingiva if this segment were moved up that high. Similarly, if the maxilla were moved down that full distance, once again, as he, one looked at his mouth, you would only see his uh, gum tissue from his anterior maxilla because it would be down below the lip line so far. Uh, there was also a disparity in the two jaws in the alignment of the arches so that they merely could not be brought together and gain a satisfactory uh, closure. You can see that the width of the maxilla anteriorly here is deficient. And so this anterior maxilla had not only to be brought down, but had to be expanded. And as we will look here next at the uh, planning casts for the surgery, uh, you can get some idea of the type of uh, target that we were interested in. This is where we wish to go. And it involved then an operation which divided the mandible and uh, we'll take off this maxillary cast and just look for a moment at the mandible. We'll see the way the mandibular cast was divided. We'll see the manner in which this segment of the lower jaw was brought upward in order to level off this occlusal plane. And uh, at the same time, as we'll follow in the radiographs, this segment was elevated and uh, the chin was reduced in its vertical length and a bone graft was placed underneath this dental alveolar block. In the maxilla, the maxillary uh, cast was divided not only in a manner to drop it down to close the anterior open bite, but as you can see from this uh, gap, it was also divided in order to uh, change the arch anteriorly to give us an arch relationship that would be compatible with the contact to the mandible. So that in an operation that lasted in total about six hours, uh, both jaws were approached, both operations were carried out entirely intraorally, and uh, our result was uh, as planned. Now when you are moving fragments of jaws around in open space during surgery, uh, things are a little bit disconcerting. So as guides for accuracy in the placement of the various segments, these acrylic templates were utilized. For example, this one was helpful in the uh, placement have the target position for the mandibular segment upward uh, to that registration, whereas in the maxilla, similarly, this registration was helpful. So that we had these guides to help us in the trimming of the bone segments at the time of surgery, uh, so that when we finished, we could apply the appliances that he has in place now and find ourselves at this particular target. We would now look at the post-operative radiograph and see the changes that were brought about in this uh, procedure. You obviously see the 
change in profile. He is still somewhat swollen down here in this film that was taken just two days post-operatively. One sees the metal appliances that are in place, uh, holding the jaws in their new position. And if we follow some of the detail here, we can see that this dento-alveolar block uh, was elevated upward after being divided from the mandible. And then the chin was trimmed off at its inferior border. It formerly came way down here. That was trimmed off, and the bone that was trimmed off has then been inserted as a wedge graft here in the space. This is the so-called Kala operation and is quite stable in the corrections of open bite deformity. The maxillary uh, downward uh, displacement is shown in part from the registration of where the anterior spine is here and how this block has been chiefly brought downward and uh, you recall this was also spread in two pieces to correct the anterior arch alignment. So that uh, a fair amount of modification in basal bone was achieved in the surgery uh, to correct uh, this major problem of open bite five weeks ago. We'll return to Ralph now and uh, see if we can have a little better look uh, at the way he's getting along. I'll put a little lubricant on the corners of his mouth here. He has, uh, he, all of this was done intraorally, and uh, the lower or mandibular uh, area was degloved. His lower lip was retracted completely uh, down to expose the mandible below the inferior border where the surgery was done. Just kind of show us your teeth, will you, Ralph? He has good function there. There's been no seventh nerve uh, disturbance. And I'll try to slip in these retractors now so you can get a little better view of the hardware that he has in place and that he's tolerated. Turn to the right a little bit toward me. Well, that's good. Now, you can see, if we come in tight here, the fact that his jaw relationship does offer him a satisfactory degree of closure of overbite in some depth. These are customized cast uh, tyconium splints that are in position, ligated to the teeth, holding the segments in place, uh, and in tight intermaxillary fixation. Now, he does not have any motion here. Try to move your jaws a little bit if you can. Very scarcely perceptible motion of any sort, and that's the way we want him. He's done a good job of keeping his mouth clean. Uh, this is extremely important when you have patients that are handicapped in this way by having their jaws held together. Now, he uh, doesn't speak too plainly, but you did hear that he uh, is back at work, has been back at his work for several weeks, and uh, you're getting along. What are you eating, Ralph? Soup. Soup for the most part. And things that are put through a blender? Yeah. OK. Well, Ralph has been a very cooperative patient. And uh, at the time that his jaws uh, are again mobilized, where the, these uh, splints are eventually removed, we'll try to have him back again to uh, give you a, a final uh, viewing of what was accomplished in this orthonathic surgery. We have an opportunity today to see one of our orthonathic surgery patients uh, in a post-operative uh, period uh, of about uh, three months. He had a combination uh, of surgical correction of malocclusion that was directed to both of his jaws. And uh, he had now about uh, six weeks, uh, Ralph, has it been since the appliances were off your teeth? Yes. Are you able to chew pretty well now? Yeah, a lot better. I think we'll uh, have a look at Ralph's uh, front face for a moment and see the facial proportion that uh, we have achieved. And we recall that the chin point here was excessively long 
uh, and the bite was open, and so the relative proportion of upper lip to lower lip uh, was even more uh, different than it appears now. Uh, Ralph still has, he's informed us a little bit of paresthesia uh, out in this area of his chin, but otherwise he's doing uh, very well, and we'll have a look at the way his occlusion now is arranged. The open bite that he previously had was severe, and uh, he was quite non-functional. I think we'll change his head position slightly and just tip it back a hair, and then we'll be able to look inside his mouth, just open Ralph, and uh, that's fine. Now close your teeth together and turn toward me a little bit. Now, if drop your chin down a little. Now we can come in tight on that, perhaps, and open and close, Ralph. That's good. Open again and close. Now open widely and close. So you can see he has a solid occlusion. And uh, just hold that one on your left, Ralph, will you please? That's good. I'd like to just point out uh, several things here. Drop your chin a trifle. The incision for the degloving operation was made along here. You can make out the old incision line. And uh, in the maxilla, the midline incision doesn't show because it was placed right in the frenal area. His overbite and overjet are normal. These, have, these teeth have a functional contact. His oral hygiene needs some attention. His periodontal health uh, needs some attention. And he also has some restorations open again, Ralph that need replace, replacing posteriorly, and there are some missing posterior teeth that should be bridged. Now just stick your tongue out for a minute, and then take it back, bite together, bring your jaw forward. Just slide your jaw forward, Ralph, a boy, back. Good. All right, we'll come out with this now, and perhaps if we return, uh, to the head position that was forward, we can get a better impression and recall the facial profile that was uh, achieved in the correction. Uh, you recall, you can put your chin up a little bit, Ralph. Recall that this distance again was extreme in the preoperative sequence. His lips in repose now contact where they formerly were parted and uh, he has a better uh, lip-tooth relationship. Can you give us a little smile? Okay. How about showing us your teeth when you smile? Okay. That's uh, about the right amount of tooth to show. And uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, return to a normal diet, Ralph. Are you eating pretty well? Oh, yeah. Real good. Uh-huh. And... Uh, You still have a little numbness in your lip? No, it's just mm -hmm. more in there, right in there. Just a small area. Yeah. Is that decreasing in size compared to what it was? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, we want to thank Mr. Fletcher for coming in and making this post-operative observation possible. We'll be looking at other means to improve his oral health through some periodontal and restorative dentistry. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.